So it's important to, uh, to, to ask, uh, is this just a vanity project or is there real potential here? Well, the down the road goal really is this. Um, little tiny robots swimming around your bloodstream doing interesting things. For example, uh, targeting tumors. So you can imagine each of these guys is a little tiny robot looking for tumors, actively destroying tumor cells, identifying so for instance, in a, in a communications framework, you can imagine them swimming around, finding a tumor, attacking it, sending out a marker saying, I found a tumor, uh, all my friends come and help me destroy this thing, and so on. So um, the, uh, that's the far future, um, that's the far future idea. Now this is, uh, I say this is far future, but I know a guy at the University of, uh, at the University of Montreal who is actually making these things. The one thing that they can't do is communicate. So he, he manages to make all these tiny little robots that can swim around in a fluid medium. They're, 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 they're on the order of, um, I think, 100, 100 micrometers, the size of these things. And, and he, he shows these crazy videos of under a microscope. You can see this, this uh, group of engineered robots swimming around. And then he subjects them to a magnetic field. And they go over here here and they can actually do useful work there's there's like a little mass that he has they surround the mass and they move it it's just it's the freakiest thing so this is actually I mean it's it's uh, it's futuristic stuff but the future is now the the, uh, the 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 potential for this kind of thing is probably five to ten years away which is much closer than you might think on the other hand today we have this kind of application. So this is a uh, this is a microfluidic etched device. So you might have heard of a lab on chip. Um, it turns out so what a lab on chip is, if you haven't heard of that, is basically a way to run chemical reactions, um, run chemical reactions on etched glass in a very small package like this. So in other words, instead of having a huge laboratory to tell you that, for example, um, a sample of meat contains a pathogen. You drop it into your lab on chip, the, all the reactions occur on this, on this little tiny piece of glass, and within, as opposed to as opposed to 24 hours, within say 30 minutes, you have an answer <coughs> that yes, in fact, this meat is tainted, throw it out. Um, it turns out that it's extremely awkward to do both electricity and chemistry on the same glass etched thing like this. So what, what uh, a lot of researchers look at is how to do everything in the chemistry. So if you if, if you want to communicate results from one side of the chip to the other, a natural thing to do is to do that with with with, uh, with molecules of diffusion as opposed to with electricity um, and uh, and uh, electromagnetics. So as an example, you, uh, some of you may have heard of uh, 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 techniques called digital microfluidics. Basically, what they're doing is instead of using traditional logic gates, they're designing logic gates that can work in chemistry rather than in rather than in electricity and semiconductors. So our, uh, our technique that, that I'm talking about today fits naturally into that framework. And that's today. That isn't like the far future. So this is, uh, this is a, a fun topic, but one that's highly relevant, in fact. <coughs>